Late that afternoon, Sybil tried to forget about what she was doing and what she was going to do, and for a while succeeded. She locked the doors and set the alarms and pulled the shades tight. She shared a bottle of decade-old 98-point Chardonnay with Ezra, and they made love slowly, methodically, as if savoring a beautiful passage in a novel. Then, spent, they propped their heads up on pillows and watched through the oriel window, airplanes flying across the sun-scorched evening horizon. Sybil unwrapped her legs from Ezra and sat up, back facing him. Her stomach churned a bit. She'd gorged herself on the wine, cheese, and olives. Her high was fading, and she was beginning to feel guilty about both the food and Ezra, but then she remembered what was going to happen, and who she was, and what she and Grant had in store for the future, and how little bearing Ezra had in all of this. How lovely, but how short and insignificant their time together had been. After a few years, he would see this, and when he looked back, he would be grateful, and he would have a fun story to tell at parties, with a sly look of pride on his face. It would never have worked. She'd been a fool, of course, as was her fault, as an artist, to believe the impossible. Their paths had wonderfully converged, but they were traveling in opposite directions, always had and always would. She'd always taken issue with that famous quote from Gatsby or whatever about the rich being different from everyone else, but maybe it was right, and it had only taken her until now to realize it. She stood and walked to the bathroom. What's wrong? She stuck her head around the corner. Nothing. This feels different. What's different? All of this. His earnest look unnerved her. I'm just tired. She ducked back into the bathroom and grabbed a towel. What was it Grant always said, that the most important acting job they could perform had nothing to do with the screen?